I don't know WebGL and 3JS, but I do know that I really like this card flip effect on the KPR website. So much so that I wanted to try to recreate it with the skills that I have. So we've got a scroll driven animation that we can see flips. And I was able to do this with a little bit of fancy GSAP and animating a clip path, which is the first time I've ever done that. So let's go ahead and see how it's done. I've also got a Webflow mouse tilt interaction working here as well. So pretty cool that that can work right alongside a GSAP. Hey there, Web Bay. In Webflow here, we've got three full page sections or near full page sections with a min height of 90 viewport heights. And then inside of there, I'm centering an image wrapper and this has a max width of 38 rem and a square ratio also has its position set to relative. Now in there, I have two images. We can see the first one is the one that is showing and that's position absolute. If I just went ahead and deleted this image and took hide off of this second one, then we'll see the second image. So I'm just going to undo that until I have what I started out with. Now the mouse tilt interaction is on the full page element here. If I come to the interactions panel and look at mouse over element, then we can see if I come to edit here and get the live preview, we can see exactly what this is doing. Nothing too crazy, just changing the rotation on the X and Y axes. So let's see what code we're loading. If I come down into the head tag, we see we are loading the core GSAP library with the defer attribute here. Then we are loading the scroll trigger plugin also with the defer plugin. And finally, we're loading a code sandbox file with the defer plugin as well. So this code will run after these two have loaded. Now, when I put this in a clonable, you'll see the code down here in the before closing body tag. All right, let's start by registering scroll trigger. We're gonna call gsap.register plugin and pass that scroll trigger module. Next, we're gonna define an object called clip paths. Now these are our CSS clip paths and we're storing them in a big object called clip paths. Clip paths is an object with two properties, first and second, and then both first and second have initial and final states in those. So we'll access those by saying something like clip paths dot first dot initial or clip paths dot second dot final. And you'll see how that happens here. Now these are just strings that define the points. If you've ever seen clip paths before, they're defining rectangles and trapezoids and things like that. And since they have the same number of points, we see four points here all separated by commas. GSAP can animate those really well for us. Next, we'll go ahead and grab our image wrapper using the query selector method. And we'll also get everything with the class of image. Remember we had two of those. So we'll use query selector all here for the class of image. Next, we're going to find a GSAP timeline and store that in a variable called TL. So we'll call gsap.timeline and then we'll specify our options in between the curly brackets here. The first option is our scroll trigger option. And that also takes an options object, which we're defining inside of these curly brackets here, the blue looking ones. So let's give ourselves some space and we'll set our trigger to be the image wrapper so that we know our timeline will trigger on that image wrapper instance. And then we can set the start to be when the top of it is 50% from the top of the viewport. And we can set the end when it's 50% moved on from where it was before. We can also set scrub to true and we can set markers to true if we wanna see when our start and stop happens. I've commented them out here, but if you're working on changing kind of when the scroll trigger takes effect, then go ahead and comment that in so that you can see. We can also define some defaults and here we're going to specify an options object. And the main default we want to say is that our easing value is none. All right, now our timeline is gonna start with a from to animation. And a from to animation takes an element, in this case, our image wrapper, and then we define the from or starting position and the final position, the to position. So those each get their own options object. And within those, we're going to make some space for ourselves here. We're gonna start with a filter value and we're gonna set the brightness of 100% and hue rotation of zero degrees. So just normal values here. And we're also going to set the initial clip path to the first initial clip path. In our two options object, we're going to set the filter brightness to 200% and the hue rotation to 20 degrees. We're also going to set the clip path argument to the first and final clip path. So this is essentially animating from a rectangle shape down to a trapezoid that has no width. So that's how we're getting that kind of animated shape that you see in the final product. We're also gonna pass an argument of zero as the fourth parameter, which just means we want this thing to start right away. Now, in conjunction with that, we wanna animate some properties on the first image there. So I'm gonna use a GSAP2 animation. We're gonna pass the first image element and the options that we're going to give it are a Z rotation of negative 15 and a scale in the X axis of two. So the effect we're getting here is our image rotating and it's scaling and growing as that clip path box shrinks down into the trapezoid shape with zero width. We're also gonna pass an argument of zero here so that it happens simultaneously with our from to animation. We can see that as we scroll, it's reacting to our mouse and it's also animating that clip path from a perfect square down to this trapezoid with zero width and then it closes out there. But right at this moment, we want to switch our image over and start animating in the other direction. So let's get started with that. Next, we're gonna use the timelines add function to switch our image out. So this gets an anonymous function to start 
and we're going to toggle the visibility of the inner element. So the first thing we'll do is we'll get the first image element by calling images of zero and we'll access the class list of that and we'll toggle the class of hide, which just sets overflow to none. And we're going to do the opposite or the same thing with images of one, but it already has the class of hide set to it. So in this case, we'll be removing it by toggling it. Now we wanna to animate to another state. So we use the gsap2 function. We'll pass our image wrapper element and another options object. And we want to start at a specific cliff path. So gsap has this really cool property start at, and we pass it another options object with the second initial clip path. We want to animate to a second final clip path. So here we're accessing and telling GSAP all about our clip path information. And then we're also going to change that filter back to a brightness of 100% and a hue rotation of zero degrees. So we're going back to our initial filter values here, but we're animating from that trapezoid of zero width to a rectangle that looks normal to how we had it when we started. Now we're gonna do a similar thing that we did to the first image up here with the second image, but we're gonna go in the opposite direction this time. So we'll use the gsap2 function. We'll grab the second image by calling images of one. And in our options object, we will specify a rotation of 15 degrees and a scale in the X direction of two. And then we're gonna rotate it to its zero or origin and the scale X to one. So it's gonna be going from that rotated and scaled state down to a normal state. Finally, we'll pass this lesson symbol, which is very similar to passing zero, just means we want it to start at the same time that our previous tween up here happens. So I'm scrolling down and we see that previous animation that we had before, and then the image flips right as we're switching there, and the clip path grows in the other direction, and we're done as we exit out of the screen. Most people who watch this video are not subscribed. Here are the top five reasons to stay unsubscribed. Number five, afraid of saving time. Number four, allergic to easy learning. Number three, terrified of making more money on website. Number two, scared of making web design too much fun. And number one, fear of becoming a Webflow superhero. Hey you, yeah, subscribe now and unlock the full potential of Webflow with code.